Everybody, it's Tyler here at the 2022 Indiana Robotics Invitational, checking in team number 1533, Triple Strange. Uh, this is your North Carolina district winners, finalists at championships as well, too. So very excited to talk about this robot. A lot of cool custom features uh, going into this. And by the way, to speak more about this robot, I have Jacob, Lori, and Avery. And this robot here, I love the custom things. Uh, custom Swerve, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, too. Uh, great intake. Uh, just a well-packaged machine. Let's talk more about it coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. So let's start out with that custom swerve. Your team has been doing that for quite a while now. Yes. Uh, tell me about like the impetus behind it and uh, just any iterations throughout the years and what you have here too. Yeah, so we've been running swerve since the off season of 2014 and we actually developed this custom module in 2017. Sure. Um, and have been iterating it since. Um, we really liked it. Um, we're able to machine it in-house and um, it's a much more affordable solution. Um, we use ball bearings uh, that we can machine the grooves in-house. Um, we have we upgraded to the NEOs in 2019 and now we're running the Max Planetaries. And we just found it's comfortable for us. Um, you know, we're comfortable with the software side. We're comfortable with repairing it. We've been able to like replace modules and like in between matches now. Sure. Um, so we're really happy with where it's at. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to further iteration, maybe Falcons or, um, you know, change gear ratios, switching to treaded wheels instead of Colson's. Yeah. Is yeah. there any uh, documentation for this available online if people want to learn more about it? Um, I believe we released um, our CAD and stuff back in 2018. Yeah. Um, and we know our current thing is public on Onshape, but um, we can make that available more accessible. Yeah, I think teams would love to love yeah. to see more about uh, what's out there. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of COT solutions that are starting to come out, right. but I think it's really important to show off the custom things that teams have done and show off why that's been so successful for them as well, too. So let's uh, go into that cargo journey in your robot. Talk to me about your intake. Uh, yeah. As we go through each thing, I'd love to just hear uh, any iterations you went through. Right. What was some of the concept and the design behind it? Right. Um, so actually, starting with the intake, our intake was the last thing that we designed this year. Um, and we actually designed it after we saw other robots reveal videos and we kind of were heavily inspired by 1678 and their um, their 4-bar linkage and their um, intake system. Um, so we fell in love with this and uh, we made a big note to have the pistons be in like their out position while it's retracted and they're in position um, while it's um, extended. Yeah. That way, at impact, the pistons don't take the um, the load, and we have not been able to like have to replace pistons, and um, um, we've never had we've never had a break and stuff, which is for our, our team is a first. <laughs> it's our first year doing plastic intake, uh, so we're really happy with this. Um, we did have the same problem as Citrus with belt skipping. Sure. So we've kind of had makeshift solutions with. Um, plastic and tape and um, electrical tape covers and stuff. Um, it still looks good, so yeah, I'll give you that, man. Yeah. So definitely. Quick, good quick fix, um, and we've, we've enjoyed it. I so, love, yeah. I, I'd say I'd love to hear uh, about, as we go uh, into from your intake here, talk about this roller system that you yeah. have here, and just like, uh, what testing did you do to figure out like this was the best solution? Uh, and then we'll show a cargo piece coming here to just kind of show off how that works. Yeah. Um, so for our feeder, we took inspiration from High Tide in their um, like 2021 robot, um, and we knew going in that if it worked for them in 20 like 2021 in the um, Infinite Recharge game, that um, we'd be able to find like a success with this. Um, so it just you know centers the ball after we intake it. Sure. That way we can be on the move and stuff, um, and we're able to. 
3D printed all, so it's actually quite light. Um, all the weight is in the bearings and stuff, so. What, what material is this actually that you're using? These are Versa rollers, the plastic oh, Versa okay, rollers. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, and then we 3D printed all of the pulleys too, um, just to keep it as uh, lightweight as possible. So have you had uh, any uh, any ways to like mitigate jamming or anything that you've had to experience or has it just kind of been very solid for you going through? Uh, for us, fortunately, it's been a pretty smooth yeah. process. Um, I mean, it looks really smooth, so. Yeah. Um, you know, our only problem uh, is that on the plastic Versa rollers, sometimes they, you know, they don't grip the ball as well. Um, so that was kind of a, like not the best decision. Um, so it can sometimes kind of idly spin and not go into the conveyor. Um, but that problem has been pretty minimal. Sure. And um, we've, had, we've been just happy with it. Haven't had to iterate all that much. Let's start to go uh, into your turret here. I'll have you talk about a couple of mechanical features and we're gonna bring on Lori to show off your uh, vision tracking yeah. and how that works too. But talk to me uh, what's gone into this uh, tower and turret area. Yeah, so we just have a pretty simple um, like conveyor system with rollers on both sides. Um, we have oh, sensors. Um, we have sensors here to detect the ball. So it's all very automated when we're intaking. It's just an intake button. And um, we have two, two stages of motors. Um, so this top stage is powered by one mower. And then all of the feeder in the bottom part of the conveyor is powered by a different motor. Um, so we can kind of separate and index the balls very easily. There's no, it's not the hardest thing to do. Um, and um, yeah, it's worked well for us. Um, and then that feeds nicely into our um, shooter, which we designed with rollers on both sides early in the season so that we would have no spin. Sure. Um, luckily for us, that was a pretty wise decision. Um, and um, for our hood, um, we thought about doing a like motorized adjustable hood, but we tried that in 2020 and it was just like really difficult for us to get it to work well. So we went with the simpler two position hood. Yeah. Um, and what we did for it is um, we have an over centering linkage on the hood. That way when it's in their, its forward position, um, there is no um, give in the piston. Um, a lot we more had consistency trouble. coming out of that, I would assume. Yeah. yeah. We had problems in the past where um, the piston, you know, it would backtrack and it would change the angle while we were shooting, and we were, like, really frustrated with that. Mm -hmm. So a nice hard stop was, like, a very easy mechanical solution to um, fix that. Um, talking about the flywheel weight a little bit, it looks like you just have a massive amount of weight going on mm -hmm. this. Uh, do you know how much it weighs or, like, what made you uh, determine to go with this weight? And then we'll talk about vision a little bit more. So basically in 2020, we just ran uh, one fair lane and we really didn't have any um, like inertia wheels. Yeah. And so for this season, I was like, just overkill. Like, All right. <laughs> so we went with like the SDS um, flywheels and we really like them. Um, and we have like West Coast products, fair lane wheels. Yep. And um, we did do the math. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but we did the math to where it was like comfortable um, ramp up time and then the time in between each shot was with the math it was like you know 0.1 seconds um, that would get back up to speed so we were happy with that and um, we went with that and it's worked well for us. Absolutely. Let's bring on Lori to talk uh, a little bit more. Uh, I also want to hear Lori too about the, the automation process a little bit more uh, in your tower area and then tell us about your uh, vision tracking. We'll show that off a little bit too. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, this year a main focus of ours was automation and making it as easy as it could be for the drivers. So really all our drivers have to worry about is um, driving swerve, intaking, outtaking, and just pressing the button to shoot. And of course climbing. Yeah. Um, so. Our conveyor, I think I think you discussed a little bit about how um, our conveyor like auto indexes, um, but you can see if we cover one of the sensors, see it just runs the bottom motor. Uh, so that really helps when we're picking up balls. And then uh, going on to our turret, we use a limelight over here, so um, I'll turn that on real quick. So we, uh, coded it so that um, our turret always follows our target. Um, so yeah, it does a pretty good job there. And 
We also have like a long range versus short range, and that's also completely automated. Um, another cool feature is our, what we call it the turnaround. So because of our wire snake, we can't just keep going around and around and around. So once we hit the outer edge, um, our turret will swing back around. And it works a lot better on the field. Um, Avery, do you want to? There we go. Oh, there you go, yeah. Yep. All right. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it. And um, all of our code is public on GitHub. If you look up Triple Strange, and then it's um, Robot Code 2022. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah, thanks for telling us about that. We're going to uh, start to wrap up your robot, hand over to Avery, talk more about your uh, climber uh, on your robot. So love to, love to hear about the side climbers, just uh, how that worked from a packaging standpoint for you, and then uh, let's show off some of the process of it too. Yeah, so uh, our, our biggest thing this year was in 2020, we tried uh, telescoping tubes, and we had a really hard time with them, uh, servicing them uh, when, when, they, when they broke. So we decided to go with plate climbers. Uh, they fit better onto our robot in terms of width. We didn't quite have the width for telescoping tubes. Uh, and also these plate climbers are just easier to service in general. Uh, we, were, we were really, really happy with this design. Uh, we've got a bump out piston here so that uh, uh, as soon as the robot turns on, it bumps these out so that the turret can't hit them. Uh, and then we have, we have these two side pistons here uh, to bump them out during the climb because they just need a little extra push uh, when we hand over. Uh, so we really only have one of these uh, one of these hooks on the uh, bar at any given time, which allows it to be way faster. We don't ever have to worry about unhooking. We really just have to worry about grabbing the the next bar. Uh, these have served us really well. Uh, we had a bit of problems with them on our first event, uh, and then we got we got used to fixing them. Uh, they're just they're they're way better for servicing than telescoping tubes, in our opinion. Can we show up uh, on the process? I know for, uh, for your team, it's a bit of a manual process through the deployment, right, on this, but love to hear, see that deployed. If you just kind of walk through, like, what each step looks like as it's going on the bar. Yeah, so uh, our first step is we'll, we'll actuate the climbers. We'll go up to the mid bar, uh, hook down with one, uh, and then the next one will just bump out uh, because of gravity. The, this piston will just bump it out because uh, we'll, we'll be hanging. It'll hook onto the mid bar, or the high bar. We'll be able to pull that up. Uh, and then our next one, we'll be able to go up, and we'll just, and again, gravity will swing. We'll be able to hook onto traversal. Do you? So I see on your hooks, you have you know uh, inlets on both sides. Are you actually ho hooking on both sides during a climb, or is there any particular reason to have both that, both ends? So, so the reason we have these uh, these polycarb uh, hooks is because uh, at our first few events, we just this we just had this metal, uh, and we were swinging way too much side sure. to side on the hooks. Uh, so we just wanted more surface area on our hooks. Sure. Makes sense. Well, 1533 Triple Strange, thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about your robot. Uh, your team, congratulations on your success uh, this year. Can't wait to see your IRI performance and, of course, future years as well. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.